Sir, uh, thanks for being here. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, before we get started, um, you've done a lot of interviews. I do a lot of interviews. I just want you to know um, I need loyalty. <laughs> I expect loyalty. Can you give me that? Eat your shrimp scampi. Was that over dinner? Yes, it was over dinner. All right. Well, all I ask for you is honesty tonight. Um, I know that when you were fired, you say in the book that uh, when, when it was over, you uh, flew back on a plane to the East Coast <laughs> drinking Pinot Noir out of a paper cup. So I thought maybe we could recreate that happy moment for you right now. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, <laughs> to the truth. Yes, to the truth. <laughs> That's quite now. Nice. Okay, so I've, I've seen your interview with George Stephanopoulos on Sunday night. Um, you did, how many hours did you talk to him? Over five. Five hours. And it was a one hour special, and 22 minutes of it was the two of you talking. Right. All right, I'm gonna try to beat that tonight. All right? <laughs> and so uh, to keep the pace up, I don't usually look at my cards, but I'm, forgive me if I look at my cards tonight because there's so much to go over. I don't know if you know this, but you've got a fascinating story to tell. <laughs> First of all, you're, you're, you tell it in, in your new book, A, a Higher Loyalty. Um, I've read the book, something I don't generally do. And <laughs> it's, I, I, even without knowing you, I want you to know, I like the author of this. He's telling uh, fascinating stories about a, a, a life in uh, the Justice Department and in criminal justice. And he's telling stories about what it means to be an ethical leader. Um, why did you write this book? So after I got fired, uh, it occurred to both me and my wife, Patrice, that a way I could be useful, she's always trying to find ways for good to follow bad, I could be useful by offering people a vision of what ethical leadership looks like and show people through a series of stories how ethical leaders make hard decisions. And it would be particularly useful now when our president is not that. And so she and I talked about it and decided, yeah, I'll do that. That's a way to be useful. When you, when you read the book, you talk about uh, prosecuting John Gotti, making the decision whether to go ahead with the prosecution of Martha Stewart, uh, Scooter Libby, um, uh, uh, talking about uh, confronting uh, the Bush administration about Abu Ghraib and about the, uh, domestic surveillance. Um, you can see you're a prosecutor. You're not just telling a story. You're laying out a case uh, f uh, for your actions regarding Hillary Clinton and her investigation and your um, run-ins with Donald Trump. It's, it's, a, it's an indictment of Donald Trump in describing what an ethical leader is. Um, do you think that he has, I know you don't like the man, but do you think he has an opportunity still to be an ethical leader? Can he turn his presidency around in your eyes? I think it'd be very hard given the way he is as a person. He's somebody who doesn't appear to have external reference points in his life. Ethical leaders, make the hardest decisions by looking to some reference point. For some, it's a religious tradition or history or logic or philosophy, tradition. And as far as I can tell, his reference point is entirely internal. What will, what will fill the hole in me and get me the affirmation that I need? And so I think it'd be very difficult. Now, he could be a more ethical leader. He could surround himself maybe with people who would serve as those external reference points, but I wouldn't be optimistic, honestly. You, you describe him as being, uh, or the people around him, as having a mob or a, a cosa nostra quality. What, what, what is it about him and the people around him that feels like the mob which you prosecuted to you? Yeah. The leadership style is actually strikingly similar. And when this first popped in my head, I pushed it away because I thought that's way too dramatic. How could that comparison be apt? And I don't mean it in the sense that Donald Trump is out breaking legs or shaking down shopkeepers. I mean it in the sense that he leads. It's all about the boss. What will serve the boss best? How are you helping the boss? It's all about that person and nothing external to that. And that reminds me very much of Cosa Nostra leadership. Well, if, if, if it felt like you were working for a, a mob boss, were you surprised that you got whacked? <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> I actually was quite surprised because I thought I'm leading the Russia investigation even though our relationship was becoming strained there's no way I'm gonna get fired or, or whacked. Because why? Why wouldn't you get fired? Because that would be a crazy thing to do. Why would you fire the FBI director who's leading the Russia investigation? <laughs>
because you're leading the Russia investigation. <laughs> what it says, I don't know if you've dealt with mob bosses before, but they don't <laughs> like to be investigated. Yeah. Um, are there things, uh, you know, I know you can't keep secrets and all that kind of stuff, but are there things that you know about the Russian investigation that were happening before you were fired that we haven't learned yet as a public? Yes. Can you tell me what those are? <laughs> Uh, no. No. Yeah. Okay. And they're not in the book. The, I had to have my book reviewed by the FBI. Oh, to, really? To make sure it didn't include classified information or any uh. sensitive investigative information. Okay. So it's not in the book, and I can't talk about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> drink some more wine. <laughs> Let's talk about um, the president for a second. You said as long as you're not making stuff up. The president has said some kind of fun things about you. He has <laughs> called you in the last few days. He has called you a uh, slippery gym. <laughs> and he has called you a slime ball. Um, anything to say back? No, he's tweeted at me probably 50 times. I've been gone for a year. I'm like a breakup he can't get over. He wakes up in the morning. <laughs> wow. I'm out, there living, I'm out there living my best life. He wakes up in the morning and tweets at me. Wow, wow. He needs to move on, huh? Yeah, you would think Moves so. Moves on. Maybe even move... Okay. But so... my reaction, honestly... But my Chris reaction Wall. is a shrug. Is What'd a sh you say? My first reaction to those kind of tweets is a shrug. Like, oh, there he goes again. But actually, then I caught myself, and I said, wait a minute. If I'm shrugging, are the rest of the country shrugging? And does that mean we've become numb to this? It's not OK for the president of the United States to say a private citizen should be in jail. It's not normal. It's not acceptable. It's not OK. But it's happened so much. There's a danger. We're now numb to it, and the norm has been destroyed. And I feel that norm destroying in my own shrug. And so we can't allow that to happen. We have to talk about it and call it out. It's not okay. Well, <laughs> you... uh, he's not the only one who has called you names. Uh, Chris Wallace, talking about your book, called you a uh, bitchy. <laughs> because he was surprised about the... Uh, you're talking about uh, President Trump's uh, hair and his hand size and the fact that he looks so sort of orange when you see him. Um, uh, why'd you include that? Because I'm trying to be an author mm -hmm. and I'm sitting there typing and I can hear my editor saying, bring the reader with you. Show the reader that room. And so I say in there, I talk about how I was struck about how skinny President Obama is. I describe John Ashcroft's skin color when he's in intensive care. I'm trying to bring the reader with me. I'm not trying to make fun of John Ashcroft or Barack Obama or even Donald Trump. And I'm trying to observe and report. Are you surprised how much attention just that part of this has gotten? Because I want to point out to everybody out there, you know, people I know and respect who are interested in this book have said, like, oh, I don't know, it seems a little tawdry, the hair and the hands. It is one paragraph on page 217 into 218. It's probably six sentences. Okay. <laughs> now it's out of the book. There's another 160 pages in here that are pretty good and pretty gripping. Why do you think people are focusing just on that? Because they haven't read the book, and they're looking to criticize the book and me, and so they're looking for a handhold, and that was an easy handhold. To my mind, it's a silly handhold, but it's something that people grab onto, and they can go right on TV and talk about without having done what you've done, which is actually read it. Um, I they said, without destroying it, the way I did it. <laughs> um, uh, when, the, when you came out here, um, the audience applauded for you tonight. Um, when I announced that you had been fired uh, almost a year ago, the audience had a slightly different reaction. Jim, uh, play when I announced to the audience, who did not know you'd been fired, because it happened in the middle of our show, I, I said to the audience, show them the reaction. Huge story that broke little, just minutes ago, like less than 10 minutes ago. FBI Director James Comey has just been fired by Donald Trump. Oh, wow. Huge, huge Donald Trump fans here tonight. Have you made everyone in the world mad at you? It's, it's, 
I was a little shocked. I thought the audience would be shocked when I told them. But in fact, they were overjoyed that even the man they don't like, President Trump, had fired you, and I think because of what they perceived you had done to Hillary Clinton. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a hangover from the, the Clinton email nightmare. Yeah, when that case began, I knew we were going to piss off at least half of partisans. It never occurred to me we would piss off all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of your, one of the people you worked with on the Clinton investigation at the time said, you know we're screwed. No, he actually said, you know you're totally screwed. All right, we got to go to commercial. When we come back, I, I want to find out whether you, you feel you were screwed, all right, and why you made your decision. We'll be right back with more James Comey. Stick around.